Ah well, next time. Remember those words, because they are powerful. Now, you're probably sitting there asking, why am I saying that? And the answer is quite simple, because I wished I'd used those words far more often than I have throughout the entirety of my life. And I am going to explain why I am saying that for you. Every single one of us is pre-wired in our thoughts and almost all of us are wired towards the negative. So when we make mistakes, we get defeated, we get deflated, we decide to give up. And I've been there way too many times, so I know exactly how you're feeling too. The problem with that is that we create an ever-increasing circle of negative mindsets and attributes that then begin to dictate more than just the next thought, but our attitude, our actions, and our expressions. Someone who was once so extremely positive will in time become the polar opposite and now be so negatively focused that it becomes a chore to even be around them. Now, my wife would, in all t honesty, tell you that uh, I have become so negative in my approach to life and everything in it that I wasn't nice to be around anymore. I only ever saw the problem. I never, ever saw a solution. Now, when I contrast that to my teens and my 20s, back then it didn't matter what life threw at me. And believe me, it seemed like life was never going to stop throwing all that it had to break me down. Uh, but I never stopped looking for tomorrow for the next thing. But somewhere, somewhere, the focus shifted from looking at the road ahead to starting to look at life through the rearview mirror. And instead of being the solution oriented person I once was, I was now focused on the negative in every single thing. You see, it, it didn't matter what anyone asked of me. I only ever saw the problems and the reasons why I shouldn't or couldn't do something. I was constantly asking why instead of asking why not. Now in Philippians 3.13, the Apostle Paul writes, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Forgetting the things which are behind. If we as believers are constantly moving forward in Christ, moving towards the Father in the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit, there's no room for any single part of yesterday in that relationship and journey because God is in a constant state of perpetual motion. But in reality, God is trying to keep us in perpetual motion towards Him and His divine purposes. All too often, we use the expressions that God has moved, when in reality, God has always been exactly where He is. It is us that move, preferably in Him. When we stay focused on the negatives, the past, the things we cannot change, we are still in motion, but now in ever-increasing concentric circles of nothingness and negativity. In other words, we're moving, but we're just not getting anywhere, and we won't be getting there anytime soon. Years have passed me by. Years! All the while I'm thinking of tomorrow, but anchored to yesterday because my gaze was always in the wrong direction. I remember once I was in my early 20s. My mother had gone to a, a shop at a new mall that had opened up about 20 miles from where we lived. After several hours of being gone, she called me in a state of complete panic because she'd be going up and down the stretch of road and could not find the mall. Hours. Now, after calming down and calming her down, I got into my car to go find her. And sure enough, she was there exactly where she told me that she would be. When I got there, I told her, follow me. So we both drove about a mile, hit a roundabout, doubled back up the road we had just gone down. Only this time, we didn't turn again where my mother had turned so many times before. This time we kept on going, about a mile, mile and a half more. And sure enough, as we came over the brow of the small hill, there it was, the mall, right in front of us, massive, completely unmissable. So why hadn't she seen what she was looking for? The answer was she hadn't gone far enough because she was facing in the wrong direction. That same problem has kept me from so much in life 
because I didn't go far enough to see what was right in front of me, to see where I was trying to get to, because I was consistently looking in the past, always looking over my shoulder. We think that Satan is prowling around this earth, looking for every which way to destroy us, but the subtlety of his evilness is to simply distract us and get us to look in the wrong direction. How many people stood on that hill at Golgotha but looked the other way? How many have stood on the threshold of divine purpose but had their backs turned to what should have been right there in front of them? Later, in this same chapter of Philippians, the Apostle Paul goes on to say, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. Let me put that in the Dewar translation for the sake of understanding. It doesn't matter what happened or what yesterday held. Today is the challenge and tomorrow is the goal because Christ is in tomorrow waiting for you and I to get there. Make mistakes, make as many as you need to, but learn from them and learn from them well so that you don't ever repeat those same mistakes again. But remember, don't focus on the mistakes. Focus on the positives, focus on Christ. And though we all make mistakes, pick yourself up, dust yourself down, thank Christ for his grace and his mercy. Then, my brother, my sister, look at yourself in the mirror and simply say, ah, well, next time, stay safe, stay blessed, stay in the spirit. This is your friend and your brother, Bishop Kai, signing off.